This past week, there was an announcement by Ford and Tesla that I believe went under the radar as they announced an EV partnership. Now, there are some that think that Tesla just gave up its competitive advantage, which was its charging station network. However, after this video, I'm going to tell you why this benefits Tesla more than it does Ford. Here, Ford owners will be granted access to thousands of Tesla superchargers across the United States and Canada. It's part of a new partnership announced on Twitter Spaces by Tesla CEO Elon Musk and Ford CEO Jim Farley. Farley joins us right now first on Squawk Box this morning to talk more about it. And Jim, welcome. This is some pretty big and pretty surprising news. Yeah, it was a big week for us, Becky and Andrew, um, and this, this announcement we think will really help our EV customers have a, a much better experience. You know, they, it, it was surprising just from the perspective that you all are rivals. I don't know if you want to call respectful rivals, frenemies, something yep. along those lines. How, how did this deal come, <laughs> come about? What happened? We've been actually working on it for a couple of years. You know, we know that charging, we're number two in EV sales in the U.S. behind Tesla. And we know charging is a really big deal for our customers and adoption. And we're now scaling, we're like basically doubling our EV capacity this year. And, and we're going to get to two million in a couple of years. So this is a big deal for, for the company and, and for our customers. And we have about 10,000 fast chargers now. This is going to double that. So 22,000 fast chargers, it'll be the best network of fast charging in the country for any brand, and, and that's why we were interested in it. Uh, we also like their, their, like their locations, we like their charging technology, it works really well as well. So in 25, we're going to put their plug on our vehicle. Yeah, Jim, I have to say, as a consumer, I think it's great. I, I love the idea of some sort of standardization or moving towards standardization yes. in the industry. No consumer wants to get stuck feeling like, oh, I finally found a charging station, but guess what? I can't use it. And you probably need a lot exactly. more of this to, to really beef up adoption of EVs across the country. Um, what I think is interesting about this is, you know, this is, if you went back to the VHS Betamax comparison on all of these mm -hmm. things, VHS eventually won out. You are choosing to go with Tesla, which has been uh, riding with the NACS standard. The, versus the CCS standard that the Biden administration and most of the U.S. automakers, EV makers, have, have been pushing. Why, why Tesla? Why this standard? And do you think by you and Tesla teaming up together, you kind of went over and can change what's going to be the standard? It's a great question. So we believe that customers should have, as you said, the option of using either standard. And with adopters, ad adapters and software, we could do that both. But we really like the Tesla standard from a customer standpoint. When you look at how easy it is to plug in, if you drop the core, the, the Tesla system is more robust. Um, the other standard is great, and we'll have adapters for that. But, but we also really love the locations. Like, I, I remember I was going on vacation with my kids. My kids kept saying, hey, Dad, can we stop there? That's one of those Tesla supercharging. I was like, no, kids, we're going to go over here behind this building. Um, and, you know, so it's, it's, a, it's a bet for our customers, and we want our customers to be able to use both systems, actually, with adapters. Jim, I Long term, when you think about this, this friends, enemy, frenemy situation, if Tesla becomes that standard, is that good or bad for you? I mean, as you, as you try to evaluate and think through what that means over time. Yeah, we think it's, it's good for us because we're going to have the Ford Pass software. So people don't have to leave the Ford pass software that they use for charging at their home or or to control unlock the vehicle or use the phone as a key when they go use the tesla supercharger they're still using ford we were right. very concerned if they had to switch over to use that tesla software but that was part of the deal and it, it was a deal breaker for us for the reason right. you mentioned and how seamless there therefore will uh payment and the like be using those su those superchargers yeah, so uh, early next year on the Ford Pass app, we're going to have a bunch of different payment options like we do today. So customers just pay, use their, you know, um, ePay system, whatever they choose. And um, there'll be no, you know, no issues. It'll be super simple. 
we're going to ship a super, you know, an adapter uh, to everyone who's bought a Ford EV. This is not just for the future, it's for all the people who already bought our vehicles. So they'll get an adapter from Ford, they go on Ford Pass, they pick the payment option they want, all the billing is the same as it is today, so it's going to be right. super easy. And, and what do you think long term the likelihood is that GM and others will follow suit? And, the, and that effectively the, the Tesla superchargers will become the standard? I think there's I think there's a chance. Um, you know, uh, the CCS is, is a great standard, but it was pretty much done by kind of a committee. And and I, I think GM and others are going to have a big choice to make. Do they right. want to have fast charging for a lot of customers or do they want to stick to their standard and have less charging? So I, I, I don't know, but right. I think, you know, we're number two last year. They were number one. I, I think this is going to be a tough choice for those companies. Starting early next. All right, so let's get into why this partnership benefits Tesla more so than Ford. So Tesla is the leader in the EVs, so the partnership could help increase EV adoption. The partnership could make it easier for people to switch to EVs. This could lead to increased demand for Tesla vehicles, which could benefit Tesla's stock price. Also, the partnership could help Tesla to reduce its cost. What do I mean? Tesla currently operates its own network of charging stations, which is a significant expense. The partnership with Ford could allow Tesla to share the cost of building and maintaining charging stations. This could help Tesla to improve its profitability, again, which could also benefit its stock price. Now, back in February, the White House made public Tesla's promise to make at least 7,500 chargers available to other models by the end of next year, both fast and slow. By carrying out these goals, Tesla receives funding from the government to further develop its network. How? Well, Tesla's great at accessing subsidiaries, the little brother of the Inflation Reduction Act, the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act provides $2.5 billion in credits for the installation of public charges. Now, let's get into the stock of each company. First, we have Tesla. I'm going to go right to the monthly chart. Yes, you did have this huge monthly head and shoulders, which we saw a price collapse to the round hole psychological number of 100 and since then prices up roughly 100 percent however price is approaching on the daily chart the 200 day moving average however i do anticipate a small pullback as price can retest this sloping monthly trend line at roughly 230 so that becomes the target on Tesla. If we go to Ford, now Ford has been a dud in my opinion uh, for quite some time. All right, so this is 68 when it was say two dollars. We got as high as uh, 36 dollars. Um, so that is roughly an 18x. Since then, price has collapsed um, several times. Now, price did get as high as $26 uh, in January of 2022. Again, this is the pandemic lows. This is when we had helicopter money. And then when helicopter money was taken away, prices collapsed. Back into this monthly support resistance band at ten dollars and fifty cents however the best level to buy is going to be at this eight dollar and fifty level where there are monthly buyers so if we go to the daily chart we can see that price is reacting to this hundred day simple moving average uh, your upside potential is a test of the 200 day moving average currently sitting around thirteen dollars you can see that it did test once, twice, third time. So, um, first target, 
get above 1240 second target $13 thanks for watching subscribe please like the video